Right, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, this month's Humble Park Chicago Avenue Community Roundtable. Uh, my name is Ernest Bellamy, uh, West Region uh, and West Region uh, Planner for the City of Chicago Department of Planning and Development. Um, so, uh, project manager for the Best Southwest Humble Park Chicago Avenue Corridor. Um, so um, our agenda for this evening um, uh, is a really intriguing one. Uh, we're going to have uh, two different development proposals. Um, uh, but overall, to, to start things off, uh, we will have a Chicago Avenue uh, development overview, uh, kind of encompassing um, the Humble Park Chicago Avenue corridor, uh, as well as a um, uh, uh, project uh, just off the corridor. Uh, and then uh, we'll go into um, a, a new uh, development, uh, which is coming to the corridor at 3831 West Chicago Avenue by 548 Development, followed by um, uh, the AV uh, team uh, led by KMW Communities, um, uh, formally uh, greeting the round table and all of you uh, uh, to give an update on the project. Um, so without further ado, I just wanted to uh, say welcome to all of our uh, roundtable members, uh, and, as well as um, uh, the Alderman's office, Alderman uh, Burnett, as well as Alderman Mitz. Um, I'm not seeing them on the line, uh, but I, I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, Alderman but... Burnett is here. Oh, welcome Alderman Burnett. It's, it's great to have you on. I don't know if you want to, to say a little bit to um, the round table. Sure. Uh, I'd just like to um, thank uh, the West Humble Park Development Council and also uh, Department of Planning and all of the other city folks that's involved. Uh, this is great that we could uh, infuse our community with some of our money in order to make something great happen and hopefully uh, it will continue to, to it will it will continue to proceed to develop Chicago Avenue back to um, the vibrancy of, of how it used to be years ago. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, appreciate the, the words and uh, you being able to join. Um, so I believe without further ado, we can get going into um, our preamble for this evening's uh, developments and uh, the Humble Park Chicago Avenue uh, development uh, uh, overview. Um, we are fortunate to have uh, Commissioner Cox on, on the line with us this evening. Uh, welcome, Commissioner Cox. And um, greetings. Thank, thanks, Ernest. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for being here. It's, uh, it's, it's just nice to have this reoccurring appointment to be able to uh, touch bases with you and um, use this vehicle as a sounding board uh, for the great things that are going to happen for Chicago Avenue and Humble Park. Um, I thought it was important as we look at these uh, development projects that we are reminded of what we uh, have been able to accomplish here. Um, Mayor's, uh, Mayor Lightfoot's initiative for Invest Southwest was really meant to be a call for equitable development uh, to permeate the West and South Side. And uh, this is a part of not just a, a one and done project, but um, an investment that is meant to be catalytic, uh, to inspire confidence in um, the community development community, and most importantly, to inspire confidence for residents who live in the adjacent neighborhoods uh, to know uh, that we have turned a corner uh, and that many of the neighborhood amenities that they have been asking for for years are coming. And some of these are small projects and big projects. And we thought this was really an important thing to realize. 
the pipeline of real investment in Chicago Avenue and Humboldt Park is, is becoming more and more robust. So on the far left part of the so slide, uh, you have uh, the, the Police and Fire Academy. Uh, as many of you know, there's a, a Boys and Girls Club that's going to provide a real safe haven for young people that is uh, being planned adjacent to that. Uh, on the far uh, east side, you have the investments in uh, Kills Park. Um, you have a number of, of, of rehab projects, uh, smaller, those smaller circles are small corner uh, retail with housing above that are in the pipeline. Of course, you have the RFP site, uh, the AV that you will hear about tonight and uh, a new investment uh, that's being proposed uh, at 38, um, 31 uh, West Chicago. So this was always the intention of Invest Southwest to create a steady drum roll of investments and the kinds of amenities that make you know, neighborhoods work. So if you go to the next slide, um, as I mentioned, um, many of you know uh, the boy, uh, about the um, Police and Fire Academy. Um, we were able to marshal a $16 million investment next door to it with the new Boys and Girls Club. No small feat. This is the first new Boys and Girls Club in Chicago in 30 years. Uh, in addition, uh, you all know that uh, Peaches and Culver's um, two sit-down family-oriented restaurants are um, going to be under construction this year as well. And a whole host of public spaces that will go along with that. If you go to the next slide, as you can all know, because you probably passed by it, um, they are on schedule um, and the build out exists there. And next to that, if you go to the next, um, this is what awaits Chicago Avenue. Uh, this um, Boys and Girls Club, the image on the left, but most importantly, we're creating new public spaces so that you know police and fire cadets uh, have a healthy interaction with our young people. Um, so this plaza that will unite the academy to the Boys and Girls Club will be, they will be breaking ground uh, in the coming months. And we're really excited to see this investment and particularly targeted to young people um, coming on to Chicago Avenue. If you go to the next. Yeah, and this is um, the other part of that. That's the, the Peaches and Covers. And some of you may have seen that these are two, two new restaurants, um, sit down, family oriented restaurants that will be on that corridor. And the space you're seeing on the right is their outdoor dining. So there will be a place to dine outdoors uh, permanently uh, for, these, uh, for these two restaurants. So these are the kind of public spaces that really ask people to linger, to enjoy public space, uh, as well as patronize uh, businesses. So uh, this is uh, something that's in the pipeline. Um, but most importantly for, for me is that all of this emanates from the quality of life plans that uh, many of you worked on uh, that talked about staking a claim to Chicago Avenue in Humble Park uh, and a series of neighborhood serving amenities that people have articulated as um, what they would like to see for their community. If you go to the next. And that a lot of that had to do uh, with health and wellness. Uh, it had to do with small business support. Um, supporting local businesses uh, and creating places for local businesses to locate. Uh, food and beverage, um, you're starting to see that. You'll see more of that as the uh, developers describe who are the kinds of anchor um, uh, retail that they wanna bring to the corridor. And as we said, the community talked about youth and culture, and we're starting to see what that looks like 
in terms of real investments. Uh, so these are the priorities uh, that the community set. Um, you can go to the, the next. Um, so when we did the work about a year and a half ago to try to visualize how to take advantage of the vacant land that existed uh, or underutilized land that existed in Humble Park along Chicago Avenue, we modeled four different sites. And we went through the exercise with the community to see what would be possible. Uh, site A is the furthest to the west. Um, what would it mean to have retail, housing, um, some, uh, some parking on the site, always with a mind to create some public space. Uh, and then you can see on D on the right side was another site where we saw the potential to do a mixed use building. Again, continuing to create more public spaces. Uh, site C here is the site which was RFP. Um, and you're going to see uh, the developer give you a little bit of an update about where they are. And then site B. Uh, site B we had identified and did these various build out scenarios in hopes that investors would see the potential of this site and go forth and try to secure it. And I think uh, if you go to the next slide, this is the, the parcel. Um, this is the uh, 30, uh, 38, 31. Uh, that you will um, see a proposal for um, being advanced by 548 uh, development. Uh, go to the next. Uh, and it was a very uh, simple uh, component, but it, it imagined retail and commercial on the ground floor. It imagined creating a new public plaza, so gathering space for the public, um, uh, uh, a degree of uh, neighborhood amenities, uh, and then um, a range of housing options, multifamily uh, housing, which would be affordable to build out that corridor. So this was kind of the, the vision, uh, and we put it out there in hopes that investors would get, be inspired and bring forth um, their interpretation of something that we feel has um, real potential. Uh, and I think that work that we did together with community uh, has paid off uh, because tonight we will be reviewing uh, a proposal that tries to respond to the opportunity that was laid out uh, in the, the corridor, uh, corridor framework. Uh, so I think that is um, the last slide. We should be, first of all, I want to thank JGMA who worked with some of you on this call and others to create these visions. Cause I believe that if, you know, I'm a, a believer that if you show the development community what a community wants, they will respond. Uh, and that is the power of planning, not just waiting for people to bring you things, uh, but actually articulate what it is you want, what it is you would support and then allow, see if they can interpret it. Uh, and I think we have an interpretation uh, this evening that should be very exciting uh, for all of those of you who, uh, who've joined us. Uh, uh, is that the last image? Uh, yes, that is. Okay, so Thank I'm you. gonna I'm gonna turn it back over to Ernest and I'm just gonna sit back and uh, enjoy uh, the rest of the evening together with you all uh, as, uh, as we see um, um, how, um, how people have responded to these visions. Uh, thank you. Thank you as well, Commissioner Cox, uh, and, and thank you for uh, that uh, great setup to um, tonight's uh, presentations. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we are on to our next agenda item, uh, which is the 3831 uh, West Chicago Ave uh, development by 548 development. And uh, I will um, let uh, transition it over to the team so that they can uh, present uh, this uh, new amazing project to you all. Yeah, Ernest, thank you. Um, I, I'm AJ Patton, founder of 548 Development. I, I'm going to uh, pick up the story right where Commissioner Cox left off because I thought he set it up perfectly. Um, <clears throat> this roundtable specifically 
it was the catalyst for this project. So uh, we sat in on a handful of the roundtables. There was a, an expressed interest in this particular site. Uh, there was some uh, some headwinds on securing it, and uh, we were challenged both both philosophically, as Commissioner Cox laid out, but also directly. You know, Anthony Simpkins, uh, Simpson uh, rolled, uh, reached out. I want to make sure I say say Miss Adrian Bo uh, Whitney Boykin made it clear. She's like, hey, I, we'd like this this site. We'd like something of scale. We want something great that is built by folks from the community that look like us. Uh, AJ, go get it. And if you know Miss Adrian uh, and uh, the the passion she has for this corridor, uh, it, it was a heck of a of of an emphatic, you know, go get them. And so I was excited to do it. We reached out. I want to pause again to thank thank Alderman Burnett. I don't know if he is still on, but he also gave some really great strategic advice and in, in introductions behind the scenes. I know he doesn't like doesn't doesn't eat up the camera sometimes but he's been really he was really vital in this project as well and then obviously the the closing it up with with alderman mitts but i want to thank alderman uh, burnett uh and so then we, once we got site control i called commissioner cox said hey we, we got a unique opportunity and commissioner cox uh is consistent and he stays on message if, if you know where he's going to go next which is this needs spectacular design and this community deserves it. This is a central uh, artery for the uh, corridor for the for all of this city. You cannot not meet the moment from design. You need to go out and have a international uh, RFP for the best architects that you can find. We did a full RFQ. We did a full RFP. We brought in a host of designers to give us their thoughts. Um, they turned in 100 page proposals for design and the winner was the Lamar Johnson collaborative led by Leslie Roth. And so we're really, really proud of the design we're going to lay out today. I know Leslie's here and her team. Um, I also want to point a, a little something out here. Leslie's leading this. Then when it went and, and then we had to pick a construction team, we called Melanie Milhouse Jeffries and Kelly Powers Berea, I believe they're both on the line, and asked them to negotiate a joint venture so that uh, we had a full minority-led construction team and engineering team. I'm gonna say that again. This is a $30 million development. Leslie Roth led, led the architecture in terms of closing the deal there. Melanie Jeffries and Kelly Berea did the negotiations for the joint venture. Uh, for the construction. Uh, I am very proud of that. That's what Humble Park represents. That's what our community and what the city and Mayor Lightfoot and Alderman Burnett and, and Alderman Mitz want to see in all of these developments. And we accepted that challenge. And so I'm really proud of the team that we have uh, uh, put together here. So I guess we could talk, start talking about the design. They, they only gave me a brief two hours to cover it. So I'll try to be uh, quick. Uh, this is the winning design. This is uh, approximately 60 units. This will be at groundbreaking the largest passive house development in the city of Chicago's history. Passive house is a, uh, a, a very, uh, on the outset of energy efficiency, we're targeting cutting utility costs by almost half. This will have a significant rooftop uh, solar program. Uh, we've got an anchor tenant, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. Uh, you, you see a, a pretty sizable uh, plaza there for community engagement. Uh, and uh, let's uh, keep, keep going just for another slide. Maybe we can see a little bit more here. This is spectacular. This turned out great. Um, and so this is it. You see, you're gonna see uh, the anchor tenant is uh, Manny's Grocery, which is uh, a collaborative led by uh, Felix and just see Felix, Jason and Carmen Rossi. They own a host of uh, their hospitality group that has projects all throughout the north, north and south side. They've got a uh, kind of a cultural international uh, grocery uh, store. They've just expanded in O'Hare. I'm really proud of those guys. They're friends of ours. And they agreed to be the anchor tenant for 9,000 square feet here. 
This is special. I'm talking about a cafe, a bakery, uh, small grocery format here. This is, uh, you know, we're going to create some real jobs and really provide a real service and really answering the call that Miss Adrian laid out for us um, and doing it sustainably and inclusively. So uh, I, I, you know, I can do two more hours of this. So uh, Ernest, keep keep going through the slides and uh, we'll, we can get to questions or if there are, um, so yeah, you can just keep fly through these. I'm sure they're gonna, uh, don't wanna listen to me blab. So you can keep, keep going, brother. And then maybe I'll, maybe I can open some space, Leslie, if you or somebody from the team wants to kind of talk through the concepts, uh, concept of design, and then I can jump back in with kind of the program. I don't know if Louie's on or Leslie. Absolutely. Here. Thank you, AJ. Thank you to the whole team. We're absolutely thrilled to have been the selected uh, architecture consultant for this transformational and catalytic project. Commissioner Cox said it perfectly. You know, it's, it's not if you build it, they will come. It's let's set the stage immediately so that we know um, what our call is, what our goals are, and um, also create um, an inspiring um, and exciting environment for um, community members, um, for all of you, and uh, Chicago Avenue as well. So we can um, kind of go through a number of these slides pretty quickly. Um, these slides actually just articulate, you know, the level of um, research and thoughtfulness and sensitivity that we approach the project. Um, you can go on to the next slide, sort of some inspirational images that began to inform the design. We looked at um, that initial concept that inspired uh, the design for this building and use that as um, a foundation to begin to create massing models and an architectural vocabulary that not only responded to um, the context, but really uh, exemplified design excellence and innovation and emerging technologies. As AJ mentioned, you know, being the largest passive house um, development in the city of Chicago really does have an influence on design. Next slide, please. So the challenge for this project was how to create spaces for community, how to bring community in, how to create a destination along Chicago Avenue. Um, and also satisfy the project requirements for affordable housing, for bringing, uh, attracting and retaining small business, um, and most of all, really creating a beautiful building that the community could be proud of. Next slide. These slides kind of go through a little bit more of the technical aspects of the building that look at inspirational images as well as um, wh where they came from in terms of materiality, looking at the culture of the community, looking at particular you know, architectonic vocabulary that was responsive to the sustainable principles. So finding a balance of beauty and function was a big part of this project that we wanted to emphasize in its design. Next slide. Uh, what you're seeing here are some of the renderings um, of where we are now. You'll notice that there is color, there is relief on the facade. We are integrating local artists in this and also integrating an, a variety of outdoor spaces, both for the residential component of the building, um, as well as uh, at the plaza level for outdoor um, flexible seating, flexible programming, and a community room um, to that could be programmed by community um, and uh, also integrating art into the first floor. Next slide. Uh, this is another view from the north, um, looking face on at the building from Chicago Avenue. You'll notice that the first floor is transparent, it's welcoming, it's inviting you in. Um, as AJ mentioned, there's a variety of functions that will um, attract people from the street. It encourages walkability. We have an enhanced landscape and streetscape um, design that uh, will also complement the interior functions and encourage people to um, come, dwell, uh, eat, shop, and live. Next slide. Um, a couple other views. These are in progress, of course, but you can see the terracing on the building is a relatively um, new idea along Chicago Avenue. So part of what this building does is it really pushes the boundaries of the types of architecture that we're used to seeing, more traditional, typically Chicago, and pushing it into the future and looking at what are our lives going to be like? How do we respond to changing demographics, social conditions um, along Chicago Avenue and in the Humboldt Park community? A few slides here show where the, some of those facade ideas um, derived. 
um, taking the Chicago window and really pushing it to its edge. Um, we know that this is in a residential neighborhood. And so being sensitive to understanding what that architectural vocabulary is and modernizing it to fit the context of this particular building. Um, here, we can move pretty quickly through the facade details, using color, using some relief and using modern materials to create a sustainable development um, that's unprecedented for the city. We can just kind of move quickly through these. These are precedent images that give you an idea of, you know, the look and feel of the project. This next phase that you'll see here looks at the, the site and its context. Um, this is 3831 West Chicago between Avers and Springfield. I'm sure most of you on the call are very familiar with this area. Also looking at a very robust public realm um, and a variety of programming in that area that you're seeing um, on the left side of the screen. Now, this is the landscape plan. Next slide. Here, we're getting into the program elements. As you can see, and AJ mentioned that there is a bakery cafe grocer that takes up a majority of the space on the first floor of the building, a sky art center that can be programmed with local artists and a community room that's complementary to the affordable housing um, three floors above, um, as well as opening out onto the plaza so that events could spill out. Next slide. Here you're seeing um, the second floor. This is the unit layout. Um, there are 60 units uh, uh, total in this building of affordable housing that are distributed um, throughout the uh, second, third, and fourth floors of the building. You can move kind of quickly through this. Um, and finally, the unit layouts that look at in-unit washer and dryer in every single unit um, that do have uh, energy efficiency appliances throughout and um, also uh, the building as a whole saves energy. As we were talking about the design of these units, um, we talked about designing spaces where we would want to live um, and also you know, connecting with community in a way that um, everyone would enjoy, that it would encourage health and wellness, that it would um, you know, bring some of the design tenants and goals of the Humboldt Park quality of life plan to life. And so designing units with that in mind, with amenities and functions that go over and above that save uh, consumers dollars in their pocket for um, utility costs were huge goals of this project. Um, this project is also in a transit oriented development along the Chicago Avenue bus line. We know that low income families spend a disproportionate amount of their money on transportation. And so providing this additional amenity will also encourage uh, generational wealth building. Again, some reference images of what some of those first floor spaces could be like, um, the experience of those places, um, making sure that community uh, knows that they are welcome here, that this is a destination, and it really adds to their quality of life. Uh, next slides, please. The remainder of these slides really are technical that get into the height of the building. Um, we are going through a zoning review. This is a four story building, which fits the context of the of the neighborhood. Next slide. And especially along Chicago Avenue, you know, having a building like this that is both inspirational and aspirational really holds its space along Chicago Avenue as complementary to the other large developments that the commissioner noted uh, would be coming along in the coming years. Next slide, please. So, yeah, a, a, that's, that's I think that's much, it, that's the last yeah, slide. That's, so, I'll bring um, it back here for you. Thank you, Ernest. We're we're really excited about being a part of this process. This is, you know, it's 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 been a long time coming, and the investments by the city um, and its partners, as well as you know, being we're extremely grateful to AJ for involving us in this project. Um, we're really thrilled to continue to be a part of the trajectory of Chicago Avenue and the Humboldt Park community. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, thank you, AJ. Um, so we'll, we'll hold for a few questions. I see there's um, uh, a few in the chat. Um, uh, I believe first up, um, there's a question about um, uh, the units and um, how many uh, uh, bedrooms, bathrooms uh, is the, the composition of these 60 units? 
Yeah, I can answer that. Um, this is Brianna. So there's the 60 units make, made up of studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedrooms. There's 16 studios, 24 one bedrooms, 15 two bedrooms, and five three bedrooms. Thanks, Brianna. Um, I, I also see in the chat, um, it looks a little bit more of a, a general uh, comment about the design from uh, Ms. Johnson of Roe Clark Academy. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll pause for, for any uh, comments from all those on, on the call, if anyone wanted to uh, uh, vocalize any, any um, comments they had about the project. I'll take a shot at commenting on uh, the comment uh, specifically uh, was related to youth in the community. Um, I think that this is a really important question to ask and particularly with um, the new boys and girls club coming onto Chicago Avenue, there is definitely a youth focus. Um, the, in the design of this building, one of the things that we uh, thought a lot about is safety and security and ensuring that the way that um, Chicago Avenue was approached, the way that the residential entrance was approached, the way that the, the um, programming in the plaza and its exposure to light air programming uh, was approached were primary, were extremely important to us and a priority in the approach um, to the design. This project is also um, going to be certified as a Green Enterprise Communities Plus project, which means that um, the design of the units and specific ways that um, this, the encouragement of a specific very high quality um, way of life for families that would be living in this building um, is the one of the primary elements to the design. It means that from the design of the units to the outdoor space that's included on different floors of the building, the way that um, communal, uh, the uh, storage, um, specifically the design of the units themselves are designed, all are at a much higher level than you see in um, traditional buildings. Um, the technologies of this building also will, as AJ mentioned, are Passive House certified. So the air quality of this building, uh, the temperature regulation of this building, all, in, all are, um, will be certified as much higher than traditional building design. So for when we talk about health and wellness of youth, engagement of youth, and making sure that youth who live in the Humboldt Park community you know, want to stay here, want, you know, encourage safety, encourage security. All of those aspects have been included in this building from the way that we approach the street to the actual design of the buildings and the, the actual design of the units and the interior air quality environments. Thanks, Wesley. Um, and uh, for the sake of time, I see one last question uh, that we could get to. Um, in the chat with regards to um, additional information information on the, the grocery store. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll, let's, I'll, we'll do 30 seconds on it, but hey, is, is it Carmen or Felix, the, the actual tenant, they're on the, they're on the call as well. So maybe they should take, uh, do their 30 second pitch on, on, on uh, value add to the neighborhood. All right, let, let me take that one. Thank you uh, for the opportunity, uh, AJ. Uh, Commissioner Cox, Alderman Bonnet, and team. So we, we're bringing um, a, a fresh perspective to, to the area. We were looking at developing uh, such a market within our neighborhoods. And at, it's Carmen Rossi that actually introduced us to AJ and said, this is what it, we're looking for in the South Side. Why don't you bring some of your 20 years of grocery experience from Stamps Club to see what we can build in Humboldt Park. What we're looking for here when you walk in there, you're looking at a coffee shop, a cafe, you're looking at freshly roasted coffee daily. So anyone can walk in the community and get their coffee that's roasted daily. You're looking at a bakery uh, with baked goods that are baked daily. I'm looking at produce, uh, meat, 
and general merchandise. But one of the greatest things that AJ had mentioned uh, and what we also read is that the community is looking for a farmer's market. And so that farmer's market will bring locally made pro products that can be sold at a regular farmer's market on a monthly basis. After that time, some of the locally grown produce can be sold in the stores. The biggest focus here for us is selling locally made goods. Uh, right now at our airport projects at O'Hare in Terminal 1, 2, and 3, we're incorporating a lot of local manufacturers that are gonna be selling their products there. And we're looking at the same local manufacturers that we can bring uh, into Humble Park. Uh, those are the highlights, but I wanna thank uh, Carmen Rossi, Jason, uh, Jason uh, with Eight Hospitality and team for working with us on this project and getting us to the next level. With that, I hand it over to Jason if he has anything to add. No, I think you said it perfectly, Felix. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so thanks, Felix, and and uh, keep giving shout outs to Carmen and Jason. Those guys are do they do great stuff downtown at the airport. So Ernest, yeah, there's the project. Uh, we should probably close again with gratitude to the mayor because. Prior to Mayor Lightfoot, this conversation, these types of conversations were not happening. And so we cannot, she may, she's present in a host of ways, but I, we just need to acknowledge that, you know, Alderman Burnett clears the lane and, and makes these things happen. And, and, with, and in partnership with the mayor, this is a really, really special opportunity and, and we've got a great team. So we're excited to work with the community. Um, Obviously, and then obviously as well as Alderman Mitz. This is this is in Alderman Mitz's ward, so we're super grateful uh, to her as well. So this is a really special, and we're excited to work with the community uh, to uh, you know get this thing started. So thanks for the opportunity. Thanks so much, AJ. Uh, uh, thanks so much uh, for your team as well uh, for um, presenting uh, this afternoon slash evening uh, on the roundtable. Uh, much appreciated to uh, hear about this um, exciting new development that's that's uh, come to the corridor. So um, moving on, uh, we are going to um, head into um, our, our second um, um, presentation for this evening. Um, uh, the AV uh, by uh, KMW uh, Communities uh, with POA and CEC. Um, as you all recall, um, uh, for the 3601-25 West Chicago Avenue um, RFP, um, uh, KMW was the, the winning uh, team that was selected back in um, uh, November. Uh, and um, uh, they're here to, to uh, provide a formal virtual uh, uh, first of many interactions with the uh, West Humboldt Park community um, um, meet and greet with you all um, uh, for what will be um, the first of many and, and uh, continued uh, engagement opportunities. So without further ado, um, I'll let the team take it away. Um, Bill Williams, uh, feel free to take it away. Well, thank you, Ernest. Um, thanks for you all for joining us tonight. It looks like I recognize a bunch of names on a, uh, and who's participating. Thanks for taking the time out. And um, yeah, I want to just echo what AJ said, you know, um, the alderman has been, um, you know, easy to work with. He understands business, he understands the people. Um, and with this new administration, it kind of made things happen um, in, a, in more of a, a, a generational way, which we believe that, you know, we don't take advantage of this opportunity now, you know, the change that we need will probably never happen. So we're very excited about this. We've been preparing for this for decades almost, um, trying to do transformational projects in the neighborhoods and these neighborhoods that which we live in, which we work in, which we I see these, these Chicago Avenue every single day. Um, so very excited about that. Um, so yeah, I just like to introduce our team and the project uh, really quickly and uh, encouraged for those who, who haven't seen the, um, the presentation video it still lives on YouTube. Um, I, I don't know the address, but it's uh, <laughs> the best Southwest Chicago app. You know, it kind of gives a more of a detailed overview of what we're what we're uh, 
trying to accomplish on Chicago Avenue. Uh, so the team um, is led by KMW and, uh, and POA is our partner and CEC. And so uh, KMW, we've been in the community for uh, about 10 years. Um, POA has been done lots of projects similar to this. And CC is, is a very important component, uh, Rachel Ivey. She's an employee, employee employer expert who kind of, you know, gets people in the community on the job and, and then also helps them transition to other opportunities, you know. Uh, so that's great. That continuity of, um, of employment is really important because we've seen how it transformed lives and we like to do more of that. Uh, and so she can't make it today, kind of short notice, but I wish she was here. Uh, she's great. And uh, the design team is led by Gensler, uh, and along with uh, uh, Nia Architects. They both worked together in the past. And we have sort of like a larger component of uh, outdoor green space. So we had, uh, you know, site design for the uh, green space. And uh, Will DeBose, he's an independent interior designer. We wanted to give him an opportunity. Uh, and so he will be, um, you know, on the design team as well, but acting as an individual. And um, we also use um, Powers uh, and Sons as a construction company because we, we wanted to intentionally give uh, an African-American construction firm an opportunity to do work in this neighborhood. And it also, we would also be uh, helping out with the, with the construction because we want to grow that part of our business too. Is everything we've done, we built it ourselves. So this would just take us to another level. And that was kind of intentional too. And we have a, uh, you know, a bunch of people who also helped us out in the community. We, we have uh, financing partners that are listed below there. And we have a couple of tenants um, that have signed um, uh, LOIs or letters of intent, uh, access healthcare. Uh, and uh, we want to give a, a, a local, very successful small business ch child daycare center an opportunity there. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so if you, you want to go to the next slide. Uh, so this is pretty much very general information about the building. It's a pretty big building or the area is like 85,000 square feet. The rentable space is about 60,000 square feet. And on the unit mix is there a nice concentration of two bedrooms, um, you know, for, for small families and that we hope to kind of go out into the community um, as, as owners at some point as it gets stabilized. And one of our um, other partners is NHS. So NHS would uh, have its new head, West Side headquarters here. And there will be an innovation center, homeowners innovation center there to, here too, which in the, in the NHS is also working on uh, strategies now to increase the um, the ownership, uh, home ownership opportunities for uh, people in the community. So all that would be happening here in this building. So um, you know, as I said, the building is it's it it, it has multiple layers. This thing is going fast, huh? <laughs> but we wanted to create, we wanted to break up the massing of the building because we thought that this building would be really big on this site. And so we didn't want it to look like a monolithic block. So we kind of broke it up into multiple parts and creating a plaza, which invites people into the building. And, uh, and also it's kind of set back where we would expand the streetscape where we activate the street level. And so as you can see here, as a, the roof would be green, it would also have some energy efficiency um, elements on the roof. And then on the back side of the building, it's also be a garden. Um, and on the other side, which we can't see here, but it also would be a garden there. And so we also try to, okay, um, the slides are out of order, which the slides I have, but that's okay. And so this is kind of a matrix uh, where it has the tendencies at. So NHS would be in the blue and then uh, we also had like a small grocer and we have a healthcare center uh, in the building. And then this is a two story of commercial space. So in the other story, it will be NHS also offices will be there too. And then also uh, a community and innovation center will be on the second level. Sorry about the slide order bill, but um, uh, I'll do my best to, to keep up with you. No, that's okay. You can go ahead. I kind of know the building without going through the slides. So, and I, we just also wanted to point out here again is how the ground floor would meet the street um, and the, some of the tenants and the proposed tenants would be there. We also wanted to address the parking situation. Um, we know that the community wanted to ensure that there was adequate parking here, although, you know, it is a um, 
Chicago Avenue is a main artery uh, to the Central Business District and uh, to the neighboring communities. So um, we wanted to make sure we had, you know, ample parking. So this is more the same of the second floor level. Um, so number one would be NHS's uh, second level, where I believe they will have um, their offices. The first floor would be their welcoming center. And number two would act as a um, building amenity and then also uh, a, a community amenity where NHS can have classes and, and, um, and, and financial education and presentations. And then number three and number four is, um, I believe it's um, the healthcare center. I can't really see that here. But there will also be like a gym in the building and um, we haven't determined yet how that will act uh, operate would it be part of the building or would it be um, you know the community can also use it so we haven't figured that part out yet but the space is there and here's the labeling <laughs> and so there's uh, the green space on the back number number two number three those will be gardens and we have a um, a, a um, I forget the name of the company, but they, you know, suggested that they run the garden and, and, and provide, you know, the uh, fruits and vegetables for the grocer. So we have enough space for that. And this is pretty much a typical uh, floor plate of how the units will be laid out. The units are pretty much average about 875 square feet. And they're, uh, here it is again, and they're primarily uh, twos and threes. It's a nice, nice mix. And this is just a rendering looking um, look to the south. And there's NHS's um, by level or space, by level office space. And um, in the materiality of the building, we try to break it up so that it won't be such a big mass. And so we, you know, use, you know, a lot of glass, the glazing, and then also masonry kind of stay with, the, you know, what Chicago is, you know, Chicago loves brick buildings. And so we also broke up the middle with um, some metalized paneling that we, you know, would also be improved with um, with local artists. And that's just a view from um, NHS's space looking down onto the plaza and looking to, um, west on Chicago Avenue. And here's the plaza with some artwork and um, and the way it's kind of structured where it's kind of inviting in as opposed to blocking out. And here's a look into the east and there's the, um, the space where the access healthcare is um, assumed to take. And then again, here's the top look into the east uh, where the green space and the um, the solar panels, and then there's the garden uh, for the, the fruits and vegetables down at the bottom on the second level. And here's an, a shot just looking straight to the south. I believe that's the last slide. Yeah, that's correct, Bill. Uh, so. Uh, that's the, the last in your presentation. We will hold here uh, for any questions um, uh, to the development team um, thus far um, from what you've seen um, and what you've heard thus far uh, since November till now. I, I see in the chat we, we have um, um, uh, some excitement, uh, excitement about uh, 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 an addition of the child care center um, being in such close proximity and, and synergies with Pro Clark and, and uh, Nia Family Center, um, as well as uh, yes, we're we're very excited about that because that's actually a community amenity and a building amenity, and it's also creating opportunity. So it's a multiple purpose childcare. And we are, we keep in touch with her and updating her on what's going on with the project because we don't want to lose that because we think that's very important. It's stabilizing too. Additionally in the chat, um, see a comment about um, the health center. Um, uh, could it be open to the community? Um, 
as it will help fulfill the, the health and wellness component. Absolutely. We, we, we just checked in with Access Healthcare. Um, they're still interested and they're ready to go. Um, you know, the space is there and it will act, you know, it's a community, it's a community asset. I see another uh, message in the chat with regards to uh, square feet um, from Leah. Um, how many square feet is that? Um, is the center again, uh, Leah? Um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. It's, um, a, it's, it's Lee. No worries. But yeah, um, just wondering uh, for both the child care center and the health center, um, how many square feet those are. I don't know if you can go back to the slide or just let me know. Thanks. Bill, they're each about um, 3,500 square feet. Thank you, Julie. Thanks very much. Any other uh, comments from uh, those on the round table? Um, uh, feel free uh, if there's any, any you wanna ask in, uh, in person, virtually here, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. This is a quiet group. <laughs> they must be well, so wild. I, I, this is Adrian. I don't have uh, any, I'm familiar with the project because it was introduced before, but I, I do want to speak on behalf of the community. I, I want to thank the mayor, Mayor Lightfoot and Commissioner Cox and Alderman Mitz and Burnett and the AV and 548. Uh, we are excited in the community. Uh, we have a number of stakeholders on, and I know they're excited because you know they're trying to hold down what they already own on the corridor. And so this will bring that energy, this will bring that foot traffic. We, we really believe in community wealth, and we also believe in, in a community where you can walk, you know, shop, eat, play, just keep it all there. And so we have over a one mile stretch from uh, Pulaski to Kesey and we're just excited and I thank you all. Um, yeah, so just wanna add and also, um, uh, my name is Keith Muhammad. I've uh, been working with Adrian uh, for over 30 years for uh, this uh, great, awesome opportunity of these two major projects coming on, on Chicago Avenue. And as we call it also the app. So we're really excited. Um, again, we've been in the mix for some, uh, you know, 30 years or more working, sweating, dreaming, planning, and, you know, and staying in the, um, in the uh, initiative to bring about a major change. And I uh, just want to thank the Alderman, of course, uh, Mayor Lightfoot, who has this innovative initiative of working in the neighborhoods, which is something, you know, that we haven't saw. And we know previous administration was mainly concentrating on downtown, but it is really, really refreshing and a blessing to have this, uh, these two major projects coming on Chicago Avenue, and we're really, really looking for um, the change and to, you know, to keep moving forward. Thanks um, for those very words, much Keith. Appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. You, you worked hard. You worked hard enough for it. <laughs> so, so we're just glad to be the the one that is helping to deliver uh, the vision that folks have laid out. So, but very much appreciate the words. Can I ask if there's any uh, stakeholders on the, uh, still on the phone, if they want to just chime in, one of you. Uh, I, I know you feel this energy that you've been waiting for for a long time. So you, now you can open up your shutters and, and leave them open. Do I need to call you out? I see, <laughs> children, I see I children's you. place. I see Roe Clark. I see A I got you. on the line. I got you, Adrian. Okay. I'll say a little something. No, just uh, Ellen Moyani with Roe Clark Math and Science Academy right next door to the AV. Well, we'll be the AV, but um, 
we're really, really hoping that this creates a positive uh, space for our kids as they're walking to and from school. The number one concern for our students is safety all the time. And so I'm hoping that this, you know, positive thing will move towards positive actions um, that the kids can witness, observe, and be a part of. Um, and so we're here to support as needed. I see a few of our teachers on this call as well. Um, I'm not gonna call them out, but I'm really, really excited. And Ro Clark is here for everybody uh, that wants to partner with us as we get this going. This is Maurice Fears, the Children's Special Association. And when Ms. Adrian asks, we, we move. So. Uh, definitely excited about uh, this new development and for certain Ellen really does convey one of my biggest pieces is the safety structure that this will present just continuity of safe space right just from Roe Park down even where we have a facility a children's place at 3543 West Chicago Avenue, Chicago Avenue and Drake and so as we look to provide services to teen youth and families this is just going to be just a perfect um opportunity to partner and, and work with along the corridor even, even further, deeper engagement. So it's really exciting. Hello. I'd like to respond to um, those two comments. I think um, with the AB and with um, the 548 project, with some other projects, um, the Chicago Avenue project, um, we hoped that, that we would create positive loitering to kind of you know, outnumber the negative loitering, which will create a culture and that culture dictates the behavior. And, and um, hopefully that is the end goal. That's what we want to do on Chicago. We're create, we want to create loitering, but the, the other kind of loitering, the kind that leaves money behind, you know, uh, we want to create retail, create people up and down, bring it alive. And uh, hopefully that will outweigh, you know, what's going on there now. And so this multiple project, this multi-faceted uh, uh, approach to development where a building is not just a building, a building is part of something bigger, which will help um, exactly what the concerns are. And so that vision, you know, that's not only ours, that comes from the department. They also seen this too. Let's create, let's create a, a district where people can come. I think you're on mute. Yeah, well, uh, I think I believe we have time for one more uh, comment. If there's there are any, um, hi, good evening. My name is Andre Good. I'm the new executive director with the Kelly Hall YMCA. This is week number two for me, so certainly excited to uh, to be here and and take it all in. Our, our CEO Dory McWhorter suggested that I attend and, and find out what's happening uh, here in the community. I was really excited to see that two of the priorities were around health and wellness and, and youth and culture. And certainly uh, we have a lot of young people in the building every single day and our focus is on health. So just looking forward to um, having an opportunity to meet uh, many of you uh, in person in the, in the days and weeks to come. And I'm certainly excited about everything that uh, I'm hearing here this evening. That's awesome because this is the first time I've met you and, and on this call, that's great. Yeah, yeah, Kelly yeah. Hall. Yeah. Looking forward to, to partnering with many of you on this call, absolutely. Okay, uh, you will. Our yeah. kids come to you, Mr. Good, reach out, <laughs> right. email, right. my email's in the thing, okay? You wanna know right. us, Absolutely, yeah? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, good to meet you, uh, Mr. Good. This is Commissioner Cox. I too, uh, I visited the YMCA facility and would love to connect with you about your 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 future needs because uh, you have a lot of young people who use that facility and uh, we want to make sure that it continues to um, you know serve them in the way that you uh, you envision. So uh, feel free to reach out to us as well, DPD. Absolutely, thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Johnson from Roe Clark. I'm the dean over here. Um, I'm really excited. I've uh, been on here from the start of when this um, design was built. Uh, well was mentioned and I'm excited of the I'm excited about the grocery store options of like I'm tired of seeing the um, the gas station bags coming through here 
So I'm excited to see that our students have an opportunity of like being exposed to healthier options before school and after school. And also that the community has an opportunity of um, utilizing and also renting out um, a space, a living space um, that is designed so perfectly. So I'm excited. I'm just, my main concern goes back to the safety of our, our youth um, on Chicago Avenue in London on Monticello um, in, in the Humble Park area and as a whole of what they're exposed to on a daily basis. So hopefully this changes um, just everyone's outlook and also makes them wanna just, I don't know, shift either away or stop the activities around this neighbor around this neighborhood. Um, so, yeah. All right, thanks so much, uh, Ms. Johnson. So um, we, we're basically at time uh, for this evening. Um, thank you all, well, before I end things up, uh, uh, thank you to the AF team for, for coming this evening and, and presenting um, um, so everyone can virtually um, engage with you all. Um, and thank you all for uh, coming to uh, the special edition that kind of uh, shifted from our normal time of 12 noon to, to 5 p.m. this evening. Um, and lastly, uh, just wanted to kind of go over uh, next month's dates uh, for our uh, roundtable. It is uh, tentatively scheduled uh, for April 27th. Um, at 12 noon, uh, there may be a, a subtle shift given um, uh, kind of the, the roundtable feedback that we went over in February. Um, and there was a lot of uh, interesting um, uh, feedback and comments towards the, the survey. Um, so we, we may be in, incorporating uh, some of uh, that feedback into how we progress forward. Uh, at, and Ernest, uh, and, Ernest I, will, yes. I will say, I just noticed in the chat, people are saying, some people are saying this time actually might be better. So I hope we would be open uh, to that because the participation here has been really awesome. Uh, and so you should, you should I think, um, listen to see if indeed people would prefer this time. Definitely, uh, definitely commissioner. Um, so that, that uh, feedback is uh, um, something we, we are um, uh, looking at and um, uh, there, there definitely may be a switch coming soon to uh, uh, post 5 p.m. Uh, so uh, be on the lookout in your email boxes uh, um, to uh, uh, email updates from either uh, Adrian with West Humble Park Development Council or myself uh, as to what may come uh, in the next month. So, um, uh, so with with that, uh, thank you all. And um, uh, that is it for this evening. Uh, thank you all for, for attending and um, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.